everybody, welcome back to Thumb FPV. Uh, today we're going over a couple different things. I've been working on this video for a minute and there's a lot to cover in it, but I'm trying to sum it all up in the shortest amount of time for you. Um, going over the Snapmaker still, part of my series. Uh, also going over the Shen Drones Thick, uh, that's part of it. And something new I'm working on is trying to print with the TPU on the Snapmaker and the settings that I'm using for that as far as utilizing that, the settings for it, and then making the parts to go on the Shen Drone's thick frame. So we'll get right into that. Check this out. So here we are. This is like three of my projects that are all rolling into one. Um, the Snap Maker, um, we're going over uh, adding new material types and the press settings for those. Um, and this one we are utilizing adding material, a new type of material. Also, this is going to my Shendrome's Thick, which I have just today finally got done printing all of yeah, the TPU for it. It's coming along not bad. There's a couple, uh, couple not so great spots in it here and there, but I'll explain why I left those in there and we'll get into that in just a minute. Okay, so here we have our frame. This is the Shen Drone Stick. Um, these are some of the test pieces that I started out with um, for printing TPU. Um, early stages, making it on into um, the newer ones, um, adjusting several settings. Uh, they were quite thin in the beginning. You see like there was like totally missing the top right there um, split wide open I did some adjusting wall settings for the thickness uh, cranked it way up to like three millimeters finally got the ones that I wanted on it they're nice and nice and pretty solid um, some of the inlay on it was a little gappy there's spaces in there but the overall print itself is pretty damn solid I'm not gonna lie the leg um, in the beginning was a little hard to get that in everything on here is a little bit different just to know what to do with how to do it um, this is my first time ever setting this up so I'm learning as far as the TPU printing in general as well as the snap maker and how to set it up so that's why I'm making this video um, I tried printing it initially the leg down like this I had to tune up some of the settings as you can see that's that's pretty horrible right there not a lot of string but there's a lot of gaps um, I went from doing that to trying to lay it down um, it did decide to develop a mind of its own and it has very very thin walls like it decided it was just gonna print that instead of anything else so I went back to the conventional way of having it stood up like this and printing um, These also are not great. Um, there was a problem with it sticking to the bed initially, and that's what these are from. They literally got like 95% of the way done, and then the print came off of the bed while I was at work, and I came home to this. So that wasn't very fun. Had to clean that all up. Um, I said that with the softer filaments, you don't need to have a heated bed to print to it'll do a good job of sticking on its own I did not have that experience my prints were always wanting to come up uh, even with the filament pressed right down on it with a decent amount of space uh, the only other thing that I noticed that was really weird okay this is the air unit sleeve holder that goes inside of the frame this is the first one I printed and as you can see there was some skipping I do like though, like this is so thin, you'd think that's one wall, it's not, this is not, this is two walls and it was so, so precise on that, like there was no sticking whatsoever, I, I figured that out by a, a fluke because I, when I picked it up I pinched it and it popped open and I was like holy cow, but I was really, really impressed with the, with the consistency, the repeatability on that, that that's really nice uh, the weird thing was that I tried doing it again <laughs> and in the second one 
it only decided to print half of the wall. As you can see, this is full to the top here. This was left off at a ledge about three and a half millimeters, four millimeters, just shy of the top. And I literally altered nothing with the code and nothing. So I don't know why that happened. Something I'm going to look into, but that's something you may experience. Um, so even some of the legs that we have here are not the greatest. As you can see, there's still minor missing in here. They are solid though. Um, and at the end of it, I did come out with some nice prints here for the front for the um, air unit camera holder. Very nice, very solid, no skipping, minimum stringing inside of the bolt holder there. So there's that. This is what I have came up with so far. Now we're going to talk about some of my settings. This is for the A350 and we are dealing with our TPU today. So uh, the piece that I have in here is the uh, DJI Air Unit Sleeve for the Shendrone's Thick Frame. See there, it's kind of kind of small. It's actually really small. Literally all it's supposed to do is go around the frame of the Air Unit. So it's not made to be big at all. And just get in on it a little closer. Nah, what the hell? It doesn't matter. Um, so you can see how small it is. We went over that. I was talking about how I got two different uh, versions of the same thing without making any um, adjustments or changes to the file as far as you know, travel pattern or size or anything like that. But we're going to go over here and we're going to check out what I'm working on for material. I've made my own tab by clicking this icon right here on the side. You want to make your own icon. You click on there. See another one popped up. You can duplicate it, make changes, whatever. I don't need that, so I'm going to get rid of it. Keep the original. Now we're going to go back over here. So in order to get to where I'm at right now, I uh, made a few changes, kept everything pretty consistent going down. Um, the diameter of the material you cannot change. Uh, the flow rate I have right now is at 805%, and that's um, cleaned up a lot of the missing and the gaps in the filament as it's been printing. My printing temperature the whole way through, I left at 225. I found it nice and even about right there. Um, <clears throat> probably could go down just a hair if necessary but that's what I found worked the best for me uh, this is also with um, treating the filament first uh, I did clean it lightly right out of the package I also did take and bake it now, I baked it for uh, they say about 150 or yeah, 153 is good um, my oven does not go that low, so I was not able to bake it at 153. I baked it at 170, which I thought was a little hot. I started off first at 10 minutes, and I worked my way all the way up to 20. Um, and it turned out good. The more it baked, got the moisture out of it or whatever. So flows at 105, temps at 225. Like I said earlier, I did use a heated bed. I was having a little problem with the... Um, material sticking to the heated bed and I did not have any PVA or anything like that to lay down so I did initiate um, a little bit of uh, temperature here actually quite a bit for the initial layer and it stopped coming up um, go down here the profile I have is just the normal quality I didn't get anything too intricate. You can change it, high quality, fast print, all that. Um, I like it right there. That's what I used for the quality. This is something I want to touch on here real quick. Um, initial line width is at 105. Initial layer height is at 5. And the layer height I have at 0.19. Now, a lot of people say that when you're doing this, the initial layer, you want it at like 0.8. After that, you want your layers at a good point too. Um, now, if you remember for setting this up though, they want you to take and use the card that comes with 
the Snapmaker as far as calibrating on the last spot when you calibrate the machine. It'll stop in the center. You bring the nozzle all the way down to the card just so it's snug so it can pull out but it can't back up without rippling. Um, I found with printing at point eight after calibrating with the card that it was just not coming down close enough. So I did take and I brought it down snug with the card and I took and I trimmed it back to point five. Um, I noticed at the point eight what was coming out there was a good gap probably like I don't know maybe maybe five thousandths maybe ten thousandths even at some times of room between the nozzle and where it was pushing it out to the heated bed and it was leaving it it was like just not coming down it wasn't pushing it into the bed it wasn't getting the good adhesion to the bed and being able to stick so I did cut that down as well. I did find that was a big problem as far as things being the first layer being able to stick. If you calibrate it with the card and you do the point eight, it's going to be too high and you're going to have one heck of a time trying to get your first layer to come down. Okay, moving on for the shell. Uh, wall thickness for my final thing that I was doing, the little um, air unit sleeve here as well as the antennas. I did leave my wall thickness, it's pretty thick, three millimeters, um, but I found that making it thicker was bringing the walls together. Now I have not used a slicer, I have not put these files on any form of um, 3D software at all. This is straight from Snapmaker, I have not done any re-imaging, recalibrating, nothing. That's why you see some of the stringing. Uh, from point A to point B coming across the arcs because I have not taken and made those changes in software via you know, second programming or whatever like that. This is just straight from straight from the uh, the data file straight to the machine with a couple changes in software for Lubin. Uh, my infill density I have here is at 105%. Uh, work speed. There you go. I have had all these down on 20 and I found I could take it up to 21 and I kept them all the same because if you start mismatching numbers then things don't want to work right and it gets goopy gloppy gappy it's a mess so I had it all the way down at 20 I initially had it at 30 I'll tell you right now um on PLA or T, sorry, on TPU, uh, you do not want it to go much above 21. Uh, the drive system for the machine is only geared on one side, and the roller on the other side to move the filament through the tool head to the hot end is smooth. So you have one smooth end, you have one aggressive end. It needs to have teeth on both sides for more of an aggressive. Uh, drive it also needs to have a tube at the place where it goes down into the hot end to come up just a hair because there's a good probably three-eighths of an inch at least of buckle room and if you're feeding it too fast and it can't come out of the end the soft material will bind up time after time after time after time in the tooling and and you're gonna spend a lot of time cutting stuff out it's a pain in the butt I did it don't do it Okay, so here's all my speeds. Now for retract and z-hop, obviously for softer material, you do not want these enabled. Uh, you want everything to stay right there because if it pulls up, then you got to wait for it to come back down and it gets stringy layers, blah, blah, blah. So no enable retraction um, at all. Not just at the layer change, none. Leave z-hop unmarked. Moving on to surface. Um, surface, uh, I do have the spiralized outer contour checked, and surface mode is normal. Uh, heated bed adhesion or type, uh, none. And then there is obviously no supports in this. Uh, you do not want supports on soft material, especially TPU. Uh, they are not friendly with that. They will bind, and you're just going to spend a lot of time cutting them apart if you're even able to do that. So here are my settings. Um, if you have any questions or anything on this, uh, feel free to ask. Um, this is really, really cool. I'm enjoying this a lot. 
Um, I like making these videos. Um, I, if you guys have any feedback on it, uh, any of your own experience that you'd like to share, please leave that down in the video below. Hit the like button, subscribe. Um, I did in a comment say that this video was going to come out last week. I, I do apologize for the major delay. I have like five projects going on right now, and I know that's not an excuse, but trust me, you guys are going to be happy. At least I hope you're going to be happy when I'm done with them all because I got some really neat, unique uh, projects going on right now, and they're sure to impress. So I hope you enjoyed this. Hate to repeat myself, but I did say it again. Uh, stay tuned to the channel, and thank you for watching. I'll have another video up soon.